Hi, a big thanks to Test the Do Destruction for supplying this uh, uh, power supply out of a microwave oven. This is the switch mode power supply style out of newer microwave ovens, getting away from the large, big, heavy transformers. Um, quite a nice little device. Um, well, saying that, uh, it's nice but nasty, of course, being a microwave oven transformer. Uh, I've even added my extra sticker to it, just to remind me. Um, but basically it's an inverter, and uh, it's, it's basically taking mains DC and then chopping it into a high frequency and using what's effectively a fly-by-back style transformer. Um, right away, there's always a problem with these. Uh, they tend to have a negative high voltage output, so I wanted to try and drive uh, the valve in my Tesla coil with this, which has a, obviously a positive plate voltage. Uh, and so it was a case of trying to see if we could modify this. Um, the first thing to note about these is they take a pulse input or they will not work. There's a pulse width modulated input that tells the little chip on board what power and when to, to operate. Um, uh, so you, you can build it up with a 555 timer, it's not too difficult. Um, the other thing I thought was going to be quite interesting, at first I thought I can split the uh, mains and the supply for the electronics because this is a, this part of the circuit here is where the mains comes in and there's two diodes supplying this, the low voltage side uh, and the high voltage side is up on this, these points here which go up onto the, the bridge rectifier and the heatsink. Uh, I thought if I cut it here I could put in a different voltage into the input. Unfortunately I think I'll run into problems because it checks the, the DC voltage via a connection onto this chip and we don't really know what's going on in there. Um, the next thing was say, to change the polarity around and was it possible? So the ground connection is here and this is your high voltage negative here uh, which I want to turn around. So it does look feasible um, the only thing is that you then make this a positive high voltage in that ground uh, and that brings it very close to this point here which is where your optocouplers are for your external input. Um, so I decided that wasn't safe enough so I have taken the connections away and floated it away completely from that, that pad here. Um, so this now has a positive high voltage feed and I've kept that resistor here. This is a bleed resistor for these two capacitors. Uh, I've kept that in place. The only snag was that uh, there was a connection, this little piece of metal here, connected between the ferrite core and this ground, originally ground connection here. Because turning around meant that this would now be at the, the anode or the float voltage, the high voltage. So I decided to remove that altogether and leave the core floating. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I could have grounded it to this side, but we'll leave it floating at the moment. Just to kind of show the diagram roughly for this, um, we've got the transformer here. This was our connection to originally ground for the core. Of course, we've now turned it around so that we've now got a ground here, and this is now a high voltage positive. Uh, so this has now been disconnected uh, this from, from the circuit here. The, um, the other thing interesting about this circuit is this is the, also the heater outputs for the magnetron uh, and interestingly they have the diode on one side and the capacitor on the other side of that coil. I'm not quite sure what's going on there and this is the, the bleed resistor for the capacitors. So this is the uh, the output from the 555 timer that's required so you can see it's got, uh, you're sitting at well, it's like 222 hertz. Uh, and you can see it's the duty cycle set up. So, okay, I've got it running on a variac, so we're going to, it's at 80% of the mains power. And I'm just going to put feed the signal in, and that's the signal. Is it seven over seven kV with the with the open circuit, the output. So the heater is running on the valve. We've got the mains power at the uh, inverter, and now we can. Yeah, it seems to be interesting. Just wanted a quick temperature from that very quick run, so that's 
28 degrees in the heat sink. This little filter here, got a filter just to between the um, for the high voltage, so nothing comes back from the Tesla coil and nothing, no noise goes in to the coil, and it's sitting about 20 or 30 degrees as well. And so is the uh, primary coils, 25 degrees. So that's not too bad at all.